Okay, um, what we're going to cover here in this little segment is basically how to use the materials uh, in an effective way. Um, it's really important to understand the properties of watercolor and how to use it so that you navigate a painting properly. Uh, it's, it works differently than other mediums, so again the secret is learning how to use this stuff. The trans that's what gives you the transparency, which is what makes a watercolor glow. So the first thing again is having a watercolor kit that's set up. I have all my colors out, ready to go. Um, I don't have to pull my tubes out and replenish, so I'm ergonomically set up. I'm right-handed, so I have my water here to my right, have my paints right here. All I got to do is get color, boom, over to my paper. If you have your water over on this side or your paints everywhere, you're constantly doing this dance of the seven hydras and you end up dropping paint in the middle of a nice sky wash or something that you didn't intend. So the bottom line is you just want to make your, your working process as simple and as easy uh, and as efficient as you possibly can. So what you do is you just you grab your water. Um, once you lay out your colors, it doesn't matter if they dry. They're always going to be water soluble. All it takes is a drop of water just in the top of the paint. Spend a couple seconds rubbing that around. Boom, you've got color. And once you've got color, you're sopping it up with your brush and you're just bringing it over to your paper and you're washing it onto your paper so that you can see that it's a translucent wash. I use my edge of my brush or the tip of my brush to find my edge. Use the body of the brush to spread the color. So what I want to do is mix this color up as dark as it can go provided that it stays a translucent or a transparent liquid. So as I mix this color, I want to get it nice and rich and dark, but it still has to maintain a, li as a, a liquid state. Okay, that's about right there. So then I come over here and I paint maybe one inch across, two inches down, just one swatch. So I get that. Okay, that's what cobalt blue looks like on paper. Nice and clean. You know, look at a photo. Do something simple at first so that you're not overwhelming yourself. You, wanna, you don't want to dive into uh, a painting like you're going to paint the entire Yosemite Valley, do all these trees and all these rocks and so forth when you're first starting out because it'll be overwhelming. But what you can do is just do some simple shapes. Like let's say I'm going to paint a pine tree here. I will study the shape of it and I'll do like a little pencil sketch. I don't shade with my pencil, but I, I draw the shape that I see. That is critical. Draw the shape that you see, and I'll show you why here in just a second. So now I've got my tree ready to go. I know where I'm going to paint. So I'll come in here, I'll mix up a color that I think resembles the color in the pine tree. And here's an application of value and color. So I usually look for the lightest color I see in the pine tree and this might be something like this. I've mixed sap green with a little yellow ochre and I'm getting kind of this rich warm pine tree color. Leave a few windows in the tree where, where, where this happens. Light shows through places so I'm filling this in my edges tell me what kind of tree it is so at the edges I'm just hitting some rough spots so that it suggests the pine needles in this tree 